Okay, so here's another solution from Griffiths Quantum Mechanics uh, textbook, the third edition. If you wouldn't mind, please liking and subscribing. I would really appreciate that. I'm going to do more videos working through problems out of the textbook here, as well as some other books like Taylor's Mechanics and Griffiths EM. So make sure to subscribe. And if you have a particular question you would like to recommend, you can ask me on Twitter, which is at Physics Helping. So check that out. All right, so let's get started. Problem 1.1. Um, so this is referencing a problem that I have here. The book does go through and talk about how to uh, solve that. So it might be helpful to reference that. I'm assuming you've kind of gone through that. You see what's happening. And now we're going to actually go through and solve the problem. So 1.1, we'll start with part A here. So it wants us to calculate the expectation of J squared and the expectation of J then squared. So where that exponent is matters. Oops. Okay. So let's do that. So the way that we do this is how we would cal calculate any expectation value. Um, so for example, we can see the point 14. We're going to square that now since we're doing squ uh, j squared. There's one 15 data point, and then there's three 16 data points, so we'll do plus three times 16 squared, plus two times 22 squared, plus two times 24 squared, and then plus one, two, three, four, five times 25 squared. And then we divide by the total number of data points that we have. So let's see, we had five here, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we divide by 14. And if you do that, I get 3,217 divided by seven. And calculating J, that was already done for us, but if you wanted to, you could do it again. The only difference is now we're not squaring each term. It was actually done in the example, so I'm not going to rework it, but essentially you just don't have these square components. Well, you have the components, but you're not squaring each J term. And when you do that, you get uh, 21, and we want this squared, so we just square the 21 is 441 cool so that's part a pretty straightforward part b wants us to calculate delta j for each j and then we'll compute a standard deviation so for each j which 14 15 i'm just listing out all the different j's so all the different uh places where we have our data point Then what we're going to have is delta J, which is equal to, let me actually have the textbook next to me here. Let me make sure I have it. Delta J is the expectation of J, I'm sorry, J minus the expectation value of J. So we're gonna do that for each term. Delta J, we already calculated in part A. Uh, well, the square of it we did. And J is right there. So, for example, for the first term, we get negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, 1, 3, 4. So that's pretty easy. You're just subtracting two numbers. And then from here, we can calculate our standard deviation, sigma squared. So sigma squared is our expectation value of delta j squared, like this. So again, we know how to calculate expectation values. It's nothing crazy. Uh, we have negative 7 squared plus negative 6 squared plus, and then remember 16. We have three data points for 16, so again... We multiply that by 3. 
um, plus 2 times 1 squared plus 2 times 3 squared plus 5 times 4 squared and that's all again divided by 14 so then I get sigma squared is 130 divided by 7 or squaring both sides sigma is about 4.31 so again um, hopefully you see where everything's coming from we have all of these which we're squaring we're multiplying by how many uh, times that pops up so 16 is 3 22 is 2 24 is 2 and 25 is 5 that's why we have these guys out front in case that was confusing okay so there's our standard deviation there's another way to calculate it using an equation uh, 1.12 which is the square root of j squared the expectation value of it minus the expectation value pause squared so this is equation 1.12 and again, these were values that we calculated in part A. So all you have to do is plug that in. And if you plug that in, you'll find it is 4.31, which is the same as we had. This is part C. Same as part B. Okay. So we can see that you don't really have to find your delta J for each J value to calculate your standard deviation. You could, that works, or you could just use what we did in part A, which was much easier, and calculate your standard deviation that way. So I think that's kind of the message uh, to take home here. Hopefully that all makes sense. If it does, please like and subscribe.